What happened when Khalil Gibran met Osho Rajneesh? It's unfathomable. It will be like a nuclear fission and nuclear fusion happened together. It will be such a huge blast that a ferocious blast it will make you thrilled and that radiation of that combination could even be sustained for long long years. So I am talking about that radiation today that is speak to us about love speak to us of love reflections on Khalil Gibran's the prophet so there is very few literature which is that much compared to Khalil Gibran's poem prophet he has done multiple books but this is one of the book he was so famous for it maybe is known to you but i'll try to make a quick comparison so we are here going to meet a part time mystic to a full time mystic osho rajnesh so why part time mystic uh, osho is uh, trying to tell osho rajnesh uh, he's uh, very famous but the word talk about dissolving into the whole of human existence maybe there are multiple version of that particular name he is very revolutionary radical and rational uh, the point is that what osho is trying to evaluate how this particular poem happened so he is telling that most of the times uh, the poet is not always mystic but mystic is always there like he can have that connection but once in a while the poet will be in that particular state and it just flows so he is not creating it so this particular poem khalil gibran wrote at the age of 21 after that he wrote multiple books but this was the only book it was as good as that so that's why osho is telling that he did not try to create it when he tried to create it, it did not happen but it just happened that's that's the thing he allowed the universe to flow through him uh the point is that when they are in that particular moment this poet poets that mystic thing they try to just put it in the words for sure it cannot be completely put it into the words but we can at least get that fragments so of imagine that is a whole rose at least if you put it in the words we'll at least enjoy the petals of it that's what the prophet is that so uh, the point is that Osho particularly he is uh, very much uh, revolutionary and radical in terms of analysis of the religions he almost criticizes almost all the religions so i have a quick disclaimer here over this reviews we will be trying to capture what osho's vision is that it is uh, if somehow just contradict or hurt any of the religion it's purely coincidental it's just part of the review only and we, we are not owning any of that opinion so he called marriage as permanent institution of prostitution and he criticized uh, Jew, jewish uh, jewism and uh, christianity and islam all for waging wars and he considered bhagavad gita and the the, the claims of uh, or the advice of Cr- lord krishna as political he even considered swami vivekananda as a political person so he considered intelligence as a rebellion and uh, he is a non conformist by himself so what osho is trying to tell is that once in a while as we mentioned before once in a while when the poet comes to tell that imagine there is another poet similar to this his name is rumi he is a full time mystic so he is like uh, like imagine you found a gold mine and a beggar will be just singing on it but an emperor will not be doing that so that's how the difference is rumi rumi or he was a sufi person so he was always on that state so you don't you cannot you cannot uh, fathom that way but khalil gibran is another way he's an occasional mystic so that's why you put a quote here our purpose here on earth as per jalaluddin rumi is to manifest the very nature of our spirit which is touched by the spirit of god so our purpose in on this hurt on this earth is to manifest the very nature of our spirit which is touched by the spirit of god all right we'll go to the first 
chapter so this particular session we are converted into two parts because of the it has totally this book has 10 chapters we'll be going through five chapters in this so first one is talking about love speak to us of love so this particular thing happening is that Khalil Gibran is not trying to put himself in that poem he is trying to get another it's like a parable way he is doing it he is considering a person Al Mustafa he is a prophet and he is replying to the people so a lady Al Mitra is asking coming to Al Mustafa in the temple and speak to us of love and he is talking about here so we will go through the poem and we will take the reflections of uh, Osho Rajanesh so as he raised his head because it is asked by a lady that's a difference so he raised his head and look at the people and they all fell still upon them so he's just, just checking that this is the right crowd i have to deliver this speech and with a great voice he said when love beckons to you follow him through his though his ways are hard and steep and when his wings enfold you to yield to him though the sword hidden his pinions may wound you and when he speaks to you believe in him though his ways may shatter your dreams as north wind lays waste the garden for even as love crowns you so shall he crucify you so the poem this is half of it uh, that that what love is to. so speak to us of love and al mustafa is talking this is what the love is so love is not what you understand love so the whole meaning of love as per osho is love and the point is that the moment we put the price because love is priceless so you cannot put a price on it the moment people always try to put a price on the things the moment you try to put a price on it that become meaningless that is limited now so that's how he tried to criticize the marriages child marriages and all these things because that is all considered as part of a cultural uh, like festivity other than not a, like a collaboration of love or something like that so he's talking about uh, that's what i mentioned before like marriage is a permanent institution of prostitution that's what osho is trying to tell and he even talk about priest uh people buy priests to worship for them and uh, they just this buy gods as statues they buy so so that's all the things so even they sell their lives he is criticizing the soldier like soldiers will be just selling their life and they will be just a number if they are died and another person will be there and most of the times we are we are into the market of the economics we are considering it as there are cabbages and cauliflowers lot of people in different different way what he trying to put is that cabbage and cauliflower is same only cauliflower is a cabbage with some university degree so the point is he's trying to make is that love is god that's what uh osho is telling but what jesus told is that god is love but what osho is trying to take a one step forward and telling that love is just a quality of god actually love is god so that that's the meaning here so when almitra talk here this is not a man is asking so there is a difference between a phony thing and phony something an american word like one time one person one philosopher went to gautam buddha and he asked a question about a particular thing so buddha asked him is this a question or is it the quest so philosopher ask him what is the difference so he's telling there is a huge difference it is like earth and sky so here almitra is asking about love and he is taking it as a quest from that lady and he's asking this one so love beckons to you go with the seed to the flower so when love beckons to you don't wait even though you don't know what is a flower still you have the seed inside you so go with it do not resist and do with passion so that's why it will have some hard parts and all these things so 
will just quickly go through again with a great voice itself when love beckons to you follow him and throws his hard and steep it is not an easy way but don't don't hesitate on that follow and when in wings enfold you ill to him and it will be a little painful on the path is painful and when he speaks to you believe in him so when some words speak to him that is not necessary that you are only relying on that word somebody can tell tell that but when you believe in that particular person everything come from that person is just seamless like it is just a mellifluous flow of the things so though his voice may shatter your dreams as north wind lays the waste of the garden even the love crowns you shall he crucify you it is not the crucifixion that what we understand is selling at that osho is telling same time love is going to crown you and crucify you it is happening at the simultaneously so some part of it it get crucified of it and some part of it it will crown you so you will be like an enlightened being okay so we'll take the second half of it same speak to us on love even as he is your growth so as he is your pruning it is two part like when you are pruning a a particular plant it is you will understand it will grow and you will prune to grow even as he ascend to your height and cares to your tenderest parts that cure in the sun so shall he descend to your roots and shake them that is clinging to the earth so it can go to the top and the bottom of you like sheaves of corn he gather you unto itself himself he thrashes you to get you naked so he just open up your illusions or limitations he thrashes you to make you naked he sift you to free from your husks he grinds you to the whiteness because white is as osho mentioned like white is not a color it is a combination of all color so he grind you and explore you to the all colors he needs you until you are pliant so like like a metal which can be hit and bend easily then he assign you to the sacred fire that you may become the sacred bread of the gold god's sacred feast so that's an important thing here he assign you to the sacred fire and you may become the sacred bird so in in the part you will be like you are into that one but you are in the feast of god like what mother teresa tell like something beautiful to god you and me can join and create something beautiful to god so and th- that's the same place where i'll i'll just put another point we'll go back to there when we put it there by jalaluddin rumi is telling when i run after what i think i want my days are furnace of stress and anxiety because when i run after what i think i want i want love my my days are furnace of stress and anxiety but if i sit on my own place of patience what i need flows to me what what poem what mysticism was talking about from this i understand that what i want always wants me is looking for me and attracting me this is the great secret here for anyone who can grasp it so i'll go back to khalil jibran again so if you all all these things shall love do unto you and you may know the secrets of your heart you will not know your secrets until you just go into that path of love and in the knowledge you become the fragrance fragment of life's heart the whole life's heart you will become a fragment of that and but if you are fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure if you are fearful on that journey then it's better that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love you cannot enjoy full so you cover it and then threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh but not all your laughter and you shall weep but not all not all your tears so in generally you will not live your full potential 
So we'll go to what some of the points of Osho here. So it's talking about reaching to the highs and shaking to the cling to the roots. So he, it will shake your existence of there. It will shake your ego on that one. And it will just enlighten you. To explore love, you have to experience love. You have to risk everything. And marriage is not a sacrifice. So that's what uh, the point is talking about when the love, it is it's not sacrificing love. It is just enriching love. Your fake personalities. So it's talking about get you naked out of it. So every person has multiple dimensions. As William James said, it's, it's a combination of multiple people and multiple uh, personalities. So as we mentioned, white is all colors. All religion talks about fasting because on the religious, this is where Osho tried to take his separate stance. All religions somehow talk about love, but they all take that punishing perspective like religion and this way of life all of this thing is a painful endeavor and uh, it is a sacrifice you you cannot live here you have to live in another world and all these things so when when other religion talk about fasting osho is telling gibran is here talking about feast it's a celebration here so people people who are not prepared for threshing never knows the wholeness and totality that's what we mentioned like if you cannot go on that journey just stay there and then but you can still do something but you cannot live to your full potential this is a second chapter on the book love possesses not so it's talking about love gives you not but itself and takes not but itself because there is nothing equal to love. So it cannot take something and give something. Love possesses not or it would be possessed. As we mentioned earlier. The moment you possess something. Then it is price. It has a price on it. And it is, it is, it is limited. There. So that's why you cannot possess God. You get the point. So when love is for love is sufficient unto love. Something equal to love is only love. When you love, you should not say God is in my heart. But rather, I am in the heart of God. So here, and think not, you can direct the course of love. It finds you worthy and direct your course. Somehow it applies to our way of being like, we go a plan but actually on the on the journey of love you can just follow the flow and love you take you there you cannot direct it course because it's so mightier than you love has no other desire but to fulfill itself if there is some other desire attached to it then it's that's not pure love if you love and you must needs have desire let there be your desires to melt and be like running brook that sings its melody to the night. To know the, to know the pain that is too much tenderness, to be wounded by our own understanding of love, and to bleed willingly and joyfully, to wake at the dawn at the winged heart and give thanks to another day of loving. And they are telling to rest at the noon hour and meditate in the love ecstasy. To return home at the evening with gratitude. The point he is trying to make is that if you cannot do all this, then you can do something. That's what this something. To know the pain of too much tenderness, to be wounded by our own understanding of love, if you are getting wounded and to bleed, you just do one thing. Be grateful for that is still love there. To return to your home at the eventide with gratitude. To rest at the noon hour and meditate in the love's ecstasy. And to wake at the dawn in the winging heart and give thanks to another day of loving. This particular day or the next day, that itself is life's loves to you. That it has given another day to you to enjoy and explore love. So, and then to sleep with prayer for the beloved in the heart. 
and the song of praise upon your lips so we'll take osho's version of that this is telling is that this is the experience of the mystic what jibrain is trying in the, this particular word is coming from the mystic uh, if suppose instead of al mustafa halil jibran was himself in this particular topic osho is telling maybe this could be a holy book now and uh, jibran could be a god or a prophet now so jibran from his uh, particular in the book is trying to tell like lebanon is famous for multiple things but osho is remembering as one is for jibran another one is sidar tree we try to explain the topic here about our understanding of love there was a dutch painter called vincent van gogh and he tried to paint lot of things but lot of things absurd things like he draw as trees reaching to the sky and it is past the star his trees will be above the stars in the painting and he paints stars as spirals so all these are not not logical to the people and always question them but what osho is telling that that all is coming from that mystic being when vincent van gogh was asked what what happened so he told that it is just coming to me i'm just painting it and later on recently osho is telling even science found that stars are spiral so it's a, the point is that what he's trying to tell when something is taking you there flow with it if you cannot consume you you have not heard it this particular words if this words cannot inspire you that simply means that you did not hear it giving artifacts for love is bargaining so here is the point like we think that love is something you give a birthday present to somebody or just give cash to somebody or you are expecting something or returning something so all that points osho is telling if if there is an artifacts or something attached to it it is not actually love it's a bargaining and it's a business transaction once a teacher uh, give an offer uh, to people who ever give a right answer they will they will get a prize and she was just taking lecture about jesus and his uh, all the great things about jesus and at the end uh, teacher asked a question who is the most influential person or something related to the same topic so one american guy told it's abraham lincoln so teacher was perplexed like i done all this effort and i offer the prize till did not answer and after some time another boy stand up and he answered that it's jesus christ but that, that was a jewish guy so teacher was also confused again so she asked the boy you are jew so why you did not tell moses and why you tell jesus so the boy told uh, business is business you offer me a prize i know moses is the best person but still only jesus can win this the particular prize so i'm 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 fine with it you get the point so love can be only give to itself nothing better as we mentioned earlier if you ask return it become a beggar a beggar is something like giving something so you, you cannot be a beggar on the love the moment you possess it you kill it believe in god buddha and the common man here is a point about believe in something because believe belief as it is it is not still certain like you can don't have to believe in god if you really know the god you don't have to believe in god you already know the god believe is something it is not full there you are not still not sure that is belief so as as buddha is telling buddha himself everybody is a potential god in itself so not god is in my heart i am in the heart of the god so that's also a revolutionary thinking every love stream flow to the universal love because universal love and the god is so vast that you cannot possess it and you cannot use if you cannot surrender just be grateful because you cannot 
plan it and control it and control the course of the flow so if you if you still think that you cannot take that path where what what jibran is halil jibran is talking about love if you still think that you are not ready for it be grateful that you will still take you to that road how fast is slow depend on your course of that so we'll go to the next chapter marriages so this question is also coming from almitra a lady again so also is trying to talk here about philosopher because all these philosophers there is strange thing that in the whole world there is no much i'm not sure there is any if there is any known lady philosopher and osho is telling is because all the gens they are talking about so much like artifacts or uh, or the things which is physical things on the world such as uh, god business money and all these things believe in god how can i become powerful how can be become like a god but ladies are thinking about love marriages child all this simple things of the life which is the cream of so that's why he's telling instead of a person a man al mustafa answered to a lady here and that's why the initially he asked he look at the people because you cannot deliver a thing when there is not a value when the people don't appreciate a thing when you are presenting something good for it you are actually spoiling that particular thing so marriages not the marriages you know we'll go through the poem almitra spoke again and what the marriage master so you see she's talking now as master because genuinely she's telling that okay you teach me about love now you are a master to me and he answered you were born together and together you shall be ever more it is not like born together before like something like what we know like okay husband and wife were born together long ago she is telling uh, al mustafa is telling you are born together in love and you shall be forever more you shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days you shall be together even in the silent memory of god L- but let there be spaces in your togetherness so generally the point is that when you love together you will be there in your silence and your other things but what is really revolutionary on this particular poem is that let there be spaces in your togetherness when you are combining two soul it it is not necessary that the two souls are becoming one no mustafa is telling let love bond you together love but let there be spaces let there be boundaries let there be uniqueality let there be personality and let the winds of heaven dance between you let one another if there is a wall winds of heaven will not pass so let there not let there be some space if there is together no wind can pass let there be space then wind can pass love one one another but make not a bond of love make not a contract of love make not an agreement of love let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls let there be always a sea going through it so osho is i'll try to quickly go back to osho and come back so osho is highlighting about a, a particular novel by another mystic poet uh, rabindranath tagore but this is a novel by him it's akari kavita last poem so this novel is talking about a husband and wife where wife is like before they get married wife put a condition if you want to marry me i have a condition so initially the person was hesitant later he told okay what is the condition so he told that we will live on a house but we will live in two houses i have a big uh, estate or this one so i will make a house for you but on the other side of the lake and i'll stay on this side of the lake so man was asking okay if we are staying separately then what is the meaning of marriage i told that still there is there we can still meet each other we can be but we still have our own time and space like that 
so we'll go back to the poem again let it rather be a moving sea between the shore of your souls let it there be a lake of things happening between like what tagore is telling fill each other's cup but don't drink from one cup one cup so you can put it in you can feed each other's cup but it, you don't have to drink from your own cup you always have your own life to live you drink from your own life your own it is not necessarily the cup of water it is a cup of life so you can feed on each other's cup of life but drink from your own cup give one another of your bread but eat not from the same loaf okay so this is somehow a contradiction also because there is in some culture that eating together is going to have bondages and all from the, so he's telling give one another of your bread but don't eat from the same loaf sing and dance together and be joyous but let each one of you be alone you can sing you can dance together but you don't have to sing together you have to sing separately let each other be alone and you have each people have your own voice you sing and you enjoy your life separately and together even as a string of lute are alone and they cover with the same music imagine a violin or anything it have multiple string each string has its own uniqueness but when you touch each string will meet its own music but the overall music it's still very awesome because each as it is staying alone but it create it can create a music on its combination so that's what the strings of load give your hearts but not in on each other's keeping this is also contradicting to the romantic expressions of the current generation you don't have the thing that you are here in my heart so it's telling give your hearts but not on each other's keeping you don't have to keep your hearts and their hearts here for only in the hand of life can contain your hearts you have to live your life with your own hearts that's what and stand together yet not near together stand together in your uniqueness because as telling for the pillars of the temple because they are talking in in a temple so he's telling see in this particular temple there are pillars is holding that roof like that stayed apart so that the pillars of life a pillar of so, uh, the roof of togetherness or roof or roof of life or roof of marriage still and the oak tree and cypress go in each other's shadow selling that uh, wordsworth used to tell that nature is the greatest philosopher so here uh, gibran is telling uh, the oak tree and cypress grow not in each other's shadow if you look at nature you have answer for lot of things even many religious texts look at nature because god had put lot of things to man to learn in the nature itself so the trees when you put something obstruction it find a way it will not grow on each other's shadow it will grow uniquely and tall by itself so we'll go quickly on osho's point existing marriage is not love it is more like a political as we mentioned a, a, a more like a fam- between a family and agreement it's more about uh, dowry and lot of other things just it's not just generally about love it's talking about child marriages where even the child or children they don't before they know about what the love and romance they are getting in married it was in old culture but nowadays not much talking about royal blood also is criticizing the royal blood because in the royal blood they always marry to the royal people so what osho is telling it is actually not good the marriage should be something between two two wide people not something very close because royal blood he is talking about vimal kriti and lot of people they will have inherited diseases and lot of problems when they because the blood is not getting pure if you really want to become a superman uh, osho is telling better you marry a lady or a gentleman from mars or another planet that is the best option he's telling is is somehow is contradicting to the current convention where he's comes out telling a particular religion if is whatever is a religion islam or whichever christian or jews they should marry to the other person he's somehow trying to tell that normally as that is not happening so that combination will be still pure 
that's what is is not trying to hurt the religion but somehow that's that's what is trying to make marry from mars to become a superman astrology and marriages so this is another point also because normally in many cultures especially in india and all uh, they look at astrology and uh, decide whether these two people are right each other and love each other like that so the point osho is trying to make is that as per science itself light travel on like millions or thousands per year like that so we are counting in light years so a particular star on a particular position now it may be like four light years or this one that simply mean that when you are looking at it actually it was not there it was there some years before and you are seeing it now so somehow that is totally not logical to de- depend on astrology that's what so animal love making that's also osho is trying to tell in even he look at animals love making they they are not doing it with joy because here osho we, if you if you know osho if you are trying to understand osho is a person who is a proponent of a uh, tantric vision and he has multiple other book called tantric vision and all these things he's on he is very much uh, admire of uh, saraha and uh, such uh, tantric uh, arts and all these things so he's talking about like joy is love making but he what he found is that most people person human beings they think that marriage is a setup of love then they make love making more like a robotic way where it is somehow like a animal love making there is no love on it like if you see two lions love meet each other or 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 whatever it is like any other animals you cannot see a joy there they are just doing it part of the cause of the biology uh and an, an incident which uh, it is an incident which uh, osho was found in a train he was once traveling on a train and he found he was in a in a cope where only two people can sit he is sitting and a, a couple came there and the lady was so the, they both of them not able to sit so the lady sit there and the the husband Uh, he went to other compartment so on every station this particular husband will come and give sweets and lot of things to uh, the wife so osho asked him how long you have been married married so she told 7 years so osho told uh, i don't think so are you really married so she told yes uh, you are right but how could you know that because actually uh, he is not my husband he is my friend so he told that if that is your husband osho is telling if he left you he would be only coming when the train is the last station when you are departing that time only he but now he is coming in every station and he is giving you seats so that's the transaction of love like a physical or such thing he is trying to just joke out of it love is a flowering of meditation is on the togetherness uh, osho is telling meditation has lot of flowers it can create lot of things to your life but love is one of the things which meditation can give uh, other points i think we already be together but not dominate let there be spaces stand together without destroying each others i think all other topics we already come across so we'll we'll go to the next again this is also uh something i'm not sure in, in the whole world literature is there something similar to this was there i'm taking what osho is telling is telling incomparable consistency he talk about love he talk about marriage now he's talking about children and th- all the three questions is coming from lady only and a woman who held a baby against her bosom speak to us about children and he said al musafa your children are not your children and they are sons and daughters of life's longing for itself it's very revolutionary that you are he's telling because we all or on the all world people try to make that okay that is my child if he fail if he fail in exam or he fail somewhere it's my failure if he succeed it's my success but 
while mustafa is telling totally completely shaking the all the things is telling your children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of lives longing for itself you are not born here now because you told yourself you are to born here your father it's life longing for itself it happen they come through you you are just a passage you are just a medium but not from you if you think that you created like god created from his image man that's what religion is so it is if you think like that then no it's not they come through you but not from you and though you are with you they belong not to you and though they are with you they belong not to you you may give them your love but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts you are not supposed to give them to feed them your thoughts and make you like you for them they have their own thoughts they may you may house their bodies you may care them you may allow them to live with your house but you should not house their souls with you for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow you are today they are tomorrow their house is in the tomorrow which you cannot visit not even in your dreams they are the part and parcel of tomorrow you may strive to be like them but seek not to make them like you you can try to be but actually the opposite is usually happen parents try to make the, the child like them but jibran is telling or al mustafa is telling so much which is uh, thoughtful he's telling for this you may strive to be like them you can be like them child is a father of man wordsworth so you can but seek not to make them like you for life goes not backward life don't go back not carries with yesterday you are the boss you are the boss from which your children are the living arrows you are sending forth you are pushing it you are just a bow only arrow is something it has another place to go so you are just a bow it is stretching together to push it archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite whoever is making this bow he knows the path to he bends you with his might and his arrows may go swift and far imagine the intelligence or super intelligence or the god he created that child upon you he is just using you as a bow to stretch so the archer is a god he is stretching you because he know where this child has to go so he know how to see that let let your bending of the archer hand be for your gladness when you are doing something stretching for their existence be glad that there will be let them find their own way for even as the as he loves and the arrows that flies he loves also the bow that is stable so the point is that he's telling god he has a reason for everything so even he loves the arrow same way he loves the bow also so don't be deprived on that you just have to follow your thing so we'll go to what osho is trying to tell us we all come across this is all questions from women he in the book he is trying to explain about one philosopher dr rande so people are coming to ask him about lot of rational questions like is there any life after death about heaven so he's talking about all such things are coming from man and all these things so when osho was watching him he was once with him the osho asked him why you are wasting your time because uh, that was just a strike on his head because nobody asked him so far like that he's telling like this is not all real question what real question is not l- what is life after what is what do you have a love and understand what is that what love is what compassion is that is all the real question which you are not answering and nobody is asking you also and the same book he is trying to explain about an incident emmanuel kant is a famous philosopher 
Manul Kand has a incident where he's telling trying to tell that one day one lady proposed to him tell that I love you do you love me So Manul Kand uh, was so great philosopher but he told that let me think about it So then he was thinking about it for multiple months say 5 6 months and is making all the pros and cons and all these things and marrying a lady So his servant is watching all these things so one time his servant uh advise him manuel I, i don't have that much knowledge like you but i have a i have a, from my life experience i have a suggestion when you come across something where it is equal weight going right and doing one two two way of doing a things if you both find good and bad on the both things always go with the yes because that is a door to the experience no will take you to no experience so that was just a revelation for emmanuel can he immediately go to that lady thing and he knocked their door and the father came out and he told that i liked i i am i'm fine to marry that lady so that that father tell that she's already married and she has children now so <laughs> that was a story so when in contradiction go with the ex experience we you cannot possess the child that's what we talk about love also when the moment you possess it you make it priceless you cannot possess it so the point osho is telling in osho's life also he did not live with his father and mother he actually lived so early with their grandfather and grandmother because uh, it was uh, her mother was the only child for their uh, grandfather and grandmother so they insisted they let the first child be with us so that's how he stay with them so he's telling that was just uh, very good thing happened to his life so that he is not constricted by the father and mother influence so the first 7 years of a child is what defined a person similar if you look at other people history you can similar see you can similar thing on isaac newton's history on the things so osho's a priest railways and creeping things so here uh, the point he is trying to talk about is that Uh, a priest is teaching a group of student that god created all these things and uh, in six days and the seven day he rested so then a, a student can stand up and ask because the student is of tomorrow so student is asking who created railways then so priest have no answer so the point is that time a boy stand up and ask i have an answer so a priest was so much okay i don't have an answer how come a boy have an answer so he told okay go on so he told that god told that all creeping things i created so railway is included on that <laughs> so that way he answer the question so he's telling that even the mother nature every time there will be a fall of the leaves it created new leaves because that is for the so you when what is the, what is the burden of the current generation is that every generation follow it has a burden of the things of the past and they try to put that past to the present so you always have this cultural push from the your grandfathers and all these people that okay you have to follow this path so there's so you should not put that burden that's what jibran is telling about in the poem and osho is telling in his words feel blessed at the rebellion so osho is telling intelligence is a rebellion so if if your child is rebel against you against your thoughts be glad because feel blessed because that is where that life's intention of a child is happening life longing for itself so this is the fifth chapter the last one for today giving this one is coming from a man giving like when you give for yourself then said a rich man because only a rich man can ask about giving speak to us of giving and he answered you give but little when you give of your possessions when you think about your possessions your possessions are li- li- limited you cannot give or it is when you give of yourself that you truly give so for what is your possessions but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow we all think that okay i have to give something maybe i need this tomorrow 
how can i maybe i need that tomorrow maybe i need this money tomorrow or that tomorrow this one tomorrow and tomorrow we shall tomorrow bring the overprudent dog burying bones in the trackless sand and he follows the pilgrims to the holy city we all store it here there here there here there like that for tomorrow thinking that we'll have infinite life and at some point in time we don't we lose the path where we store all this and life will end and what is fear of need but need itself it's is not dread of thirst when you well is full it is a thirst that is unquenchable so the possessions or the more if you get 1 million you may need 10 million if you need 10 million you mean 100 million so it is unquenchable you cannot think that okay i have 1 million then i'll give there are those who give little of much what they have and they give it for recognition and their hidden desire make their gift unwholesomeable unwholesome so the point is that there is an intention behind giving that is important also if you give it for recognition then that's not giving that's what al mustafa is telling on through jibran and there are those who have little and give it all there are people if you see all this uh, prophets before like moses and uh, jesus and godam buddha mahavira and prophet muhammad all these people they they live or they just born on that abundance there is a reason for that so it's telling for those who who have we little and give it all these are the believers in life and bounty of life their coffer is never empty you, there are people who have very little they give it all they are the people who live in abundance of life they are in the belief of existence and abundance of the world their life will not be empty at any point in time there are those who give with joy and their joy is their reward there are those who give with pain and their pain is their baptism baptism is not something baptism in the religion is talking about baptism is some is something like it will purify you and there are those who give and no not pain in giving nor they seek joy nor give in mindfulness of virtue and there are those who give and no not pain in giving nor they they give in the yonder valley with the myrtle breed such craftness and fragrance in the space there are people who just give without pain and without all these things and nor give with mindfulness like the fragrance into the space it will be everywhere though the hands of such of these god speaks and from their behind i smiles he smiles upon the earth so when you give like that god will speak to you your tongues god will work through your hands god will walk through your legs and he will smile through your eyes it is well to give when asked but it is better to give unasked or she's telling about a story here like when he was studying in a university one time every every month he used to get a 200 dollar money order and he was don't know from where but actually it was sent by a university chancellor and only when he died only he come across understand that this is a person who is sending and his wife was thinking that how can i send money now so osho ask why this man send me money so he's telling that he think that you always love books so you don't have money to buy books and so that's why he is sending you this money to you so the point is trying to make that if somebody ask you and you give something that is still giving but when you try to find out that there is a requirement of something and give that is more valuable than that unasked giving and to the open handed the search for one who shall receive is a joy greater than giving and they ought you will withhold that there are some days to be given therefore give now and the season of giving may be yours and not your inheritors the point is that we all try to make money to keep it for our children and all these things inheritance osho is trying to tell there is two problems of that one is that you will not be able to enjoy or give 
to back to them and second thing you are hurting the future generation their opportunity to earn it so we'll quickly go through osho's point and we'll complete the part one corrupted by ambitions so the whole world now we are corrupted by ambitions that is also making us limited to the giving we all think that we want to be that we want to be become this we want to get that job and give that salary so ambitions is from when the when they are feeding with the mother's milk they are giving that ambition so the osho is trying to tell a story about a king and a beggar so one time a beggar come excuse me a beggar come with a ball and he tell that uh, king i heard about you can you give something out of this one and i am thinking that you cannot fill this ball so king was having that it hurt his ego the king is telling no i can fill your ball i have too much gold and diamonds here i can fill your ball so king ask his team and they tried to fill the ball all what they are filling it is not filling there then king ordered to get all his wealth put it there and put it there he told that i'll keep my promise i'll fill this floor but later on the king become bigger uh, beggar because he tried to fill he lost everything by filling that ball at last uh, the king asked the beggar what is this uh, ball so he told that this is actually a skull of a person i cut it and then i polish it to make it as a ball so uh, uh, what the story is trying to tell that the man head was so much long it cannot fill all these diamonds still it it feels the beggar so that ball is uh, that because that is made of a human being skull that is why it is taking it all it is not a magic to just uh, do that and also is telling that rejoice first then renounce this is the method here you just have to appreciate and abundance you have enjoy it and the same time renounce it. but do that first rejoice first and then you don't have to be limited by your rejoicing give up your desire of possessiveness so people are too much people are poverty worshipers so that's also hurting the abundance mindset existence in take care of me osho have a story when he was after the college and all he was living his father was so much concerned about his wealth and so he tried to all his inherited wealth to osho so osho told i don't want it so tell that existence i live in the existence the god so i know that this god will feed me so that itself is fine so one bucks to thousand bucks god's donation it's also perplexing thing we give it to the religious institution and all thinking that priest or this people tell if you give 1 dollar here you will get 10 dollar in or 100 dollar in heaven so we are all fond of that one and that's why we are so god is abundant already god don't want your million dollar or 100 bucks or something like that so that's another revelation here give with pain or joy pain will purify either way you can give it but both will be good for you if you keep it for future i think we already come across so that's uh, somehow the end of the part 1 we'll come across with the part 2 with another five chapters shortly until then uh, feel free to comment on us we are trying to improve from all of your comments and all these things so if you have some comments about this particular review how to improve you can try to improve it in part 2 of the same book so feel free to like subscribe and all these things what which you really do if you like only otherwise don't do it so until then see you soon with another uh, next part shortly Bye for now.